Hello and welcome exiles to a progression update to my ivory righteous fire ascendant now to start this video off I want to address some common questions and concerns I get with the build uh, number one people say wow you just got hit for 20,000 you're about to die oh my goodness you got hit for 21,000 what did that uh, I'm not getting hit for 21,000 very few things in the game can hit for what would need to be like 80,000 elemental damage to hit my life pool for 20k. That is simply just how Vile Righteous Fire works. Vile Righteous Fire says, sacrifice 60% of your total energy shield and life. So my total energy shield and life would be about 48,600. So 60% of that, which is roughly around 25-ish thousand. Basically, it will sacrifice that much ES and then it will give me 160% of the amount sacrificed as extra damage over time. That's why our RF gets a massive damage boost when we activate Val Righteous Fire. Because we go from dealing a, I don't know what we're at, 15 to 20,000 base damage per second to dealing like a 60,000 base damage per second. Val Righteous Fire is a big thing. You'll notice it right here. I press Soul Ripper, I get my Val Righteous Fire. And you'll see here when I press Val Righteous Fire, we, we got hit down to what i believe was roughly like 7k so it, it took 30k and then we deal 160 percent of that as damage over time now you'll see hey it looks like you're not sustaining or you're not doing well that's because right now we don't have our flasks on with our flasks on we have a uh what's the word <laughs> capped rise <laughs> so right now in our character we are doing permanent uptime so for a, another concern people are asking how are you not dying to chaos damage it's simply course gain elixir this flask is in my opinion the best way to go low life in this game right now chevrons used to be the meta thanks to trader keystone and things like pathfinder flash sustain or ascendant flash sustain or flash sustain with the uh chest implicit you can get on eldritch currencies you can start to sustain flasks like course gain elixir course gain elixir has a very long duration it lasts 12 seconds it only costs 20 charges and with ascendant and this is one of the main reasons we're doing an ascendant pathfinder we can then get ourselves a it's not technically permanent uptime eventually this flask will run out same with our sapphire flask but if you're playing the game it will effectively never run out if you're generating any minutia of charges in the, in the span of two minutes you will generate charges so i always think this or i always like to say it's called practical permanent uptime is what i term it as and this is what i always do whenever i play a course game elixir build you don't want to invest over this unless you just want to go afk if you want to go afk then you have to get perfect permanent uptime but if you're actually going to be playing the game you if you want to go afk for a minute stuff like that you can do in terms of getting practical permanent uptime aka investing minimally as you can to still get it to have uptime where it's going to last through any boss fight or any mapping encounter that being said this is a situation where if you get too much reduced flash charges on a boss fight like if you try to do an uber x arc and had i don't know 50 percent reduced charges that might be a brick scenario so you couldn't run that map mod that is something you uh, we will have to account for but that is how we deal with chaos I mean, now, now you'll see as i was doing that fire entire monologue our course gain elixir finally ran out if we did invest a little bit more i would tempt i'd be tempted to maybe go for a uh 10% flash duration maybe as one affix on one of my jewels maybe would make it feel just a little bit better but right now it's clean enough from my experience I've never died yet to my flasks already now now another question I have gotten or seen a lot is why don't you just do ghost right with a um Chayula's forgetting the name but it's the amulet that converts why am I forgetting that oh well anyways Chayula's presence I think yeah presence Basically, the difference between Ivory Tower and things that like um, Ghost Wraith and Chayula's Presence, mods that convert your ES, there are some key, key distinct differences. One is how the formula works. If you do conversion, percent ES and percent life are additive with each other, aka if you have a thousand base life and you have... I don't know, 500% life and 500% ES, and you convert 50% of it, That then you'll get 500 ES, and that will get multiplied by 1,000% total. Versus if you have an ivory tower, and you have a 300 flat ES, first the 500% will apply from life, which will take that 300, or take that 300 life total to about uh, 1,800, and then the 500 
percent from es will apply and it'll take it again and multiply it up again so instead of ending up with a character with um 5,000 es you'll end up with a character with like 10,000 es there is a multiplier there and that's why even though we're getting a smaller initial value the way this works is it's adding flat es onto our build based on our life total which means you're investing into life which is making that number go higher but then the es investment multiplies with that rather than just being additive so ivory tower is strictly just better than ghost Rite or presence of chula so that is why ivory tower okay i think that answers some of the main obvious uh things i've seen a lot i am gonna go ahead and talk a little bit about what we've done for upgrades for the character so upgrade number one we made is we got out of the um glimpse of chaos i was using glimpse of chaos was breaking our resistances previously before when we had no glimpse of chaos we were at like 40 and 40 for our lightning and cold because glimpse of chaos reduces those resistances so even if you're over cap it subtracts them down so swapped out a glimpse of chaos we went for a helmet that had strength int and chaos res and ideally i would want to min max the craft a little bit better and try to get more es on this but I was running low on budget on the helmet and I wanted to invest in other pieces of gear, which we'll go on to uh, now. Other pieces of gear are, for example, and I think this is a backbone uh, pillar. If you're playing a Righteous Fire build, jewels, jewels, jewels. The Righteous Fire jewel is simple. It is fractured life and you spam Scorch Fossils. It is not an easy process. It's roughly a 1 in 600 to hit fire dot multi percent fire damage and burn damage but jewel sockets greatly outweigh basically any sort of other scaling you can get in a righteous fire character i used to have these nodes over here with all this life and all these fire dot multis and although these are some of the best rf damage nodes on the tree just the travel passives outweighed the benefit i was getting from them in terms of jewels were just better i basically was able to replace these 10 nodes with a jewel socket a jewel socket and a jewel socket and R of Jewels, although they are more expensive to do, I gained another like 60% damage, some dot multi, and about 50 flat strength, which all helped me scale the build's HP scaling higher and higher, and thus bring in more value, and thus have an upgrade to the character. Next up, we made what is possibly the luckiest thing I have ever done in terms of exalt slamming. This shield, I wanted to go for strength and max res. The only way to get strength on an imp based shield is to slam strength essences. So I had to start with rage essences trying to get max res. I then got max res and proceeded to do a multi mod plus suffixes can't be changed and then do a reforged defense with the suffixes can't be with the multi mod i can continue to try to craft the prefixes out with crafts while I without having to recraft multi mod every single time so if i had a suffixes can't be changed reforged defense i did that a few times got bad defense bad defense bad defense and then eventually i got t1 flat es which is fantastic i was like okay let me try to finish this up all i did was i blocked mana and i slammed and i slammed t1 percent es which is really, really lucky. And then I proceeded to do the exact same thing again by blind slamming T1 life. These are the three top mods I wanted on my prefixes. And I don't know what happened, but I was blessed by Chris himself or something because we hit essentially what is the perfect shield for us. The only way I could feasibly upgrade this shield is one, get a little bit better on the synth implicit percent dex isn't really ideal. I couldn't really roll over it because that's almost perfect for an omni stacking shield so i didn't really want to roll over it when i hit it and then on top of that we could technically get like t1 int on the suffixes but honestly i'd rather have the flexibility of being able to change my benchcraft around and try out different mods in that specific location as for our tree it's pretty much the same as before with max res strength and strength except this time i went for implicit magnitudes because i thought that three percent uh, strength and 10 int and 3% dex would be more valuable than just 5% strength. I might have made a bit of a miscalculation slash I might have been mostly thinking about the fact if I do end up wanting to make an omni build this shield would be perfect for it and uh, so that's why I went for those affixes because I'm not going to get another opportunity to imprint this base after I have it crafted. All right after that in terms of upgrades the other big upgrade we made was orias and i've never played with this flask since it came out because pre when it came out it was like 30 divines i didn't want to touch it but this league it was a lot less still expensive 10 divines still still expensive but ultimately it was so worth it this has made mapping feel 
a lot smoother, especially when I didn't want to invest into Scorch Boots because Scorch Boots require a boot slot and it is a big sacrifice for our character to give up a boot slot, much more so than a regular Righteous Fire character. And in that regard, I decided to Ultra Orias Sand and it's, we have permanent uptime on it and it feels really good for just going in, one monster dies and a lot of times it'll finish off the pack. It's not gonna chain explode, ignite off screen because we don't have investment into those sorts of mechanics, but ultimately it feels very, very good. All right. That goes over the main upgrades we made uh, since the last video you've seen. The other upgrades we made are basically just getting a higher level. And we're up to 3.25k uh, strength, 1.2k int, 300 dex. I think that was pretty much where we, were, where we were before. And I'll go ahead and give you guys a showcase on a Hydra and talk about planning for the future. There's a Hydra with, uh, I guess, reduced flash charge mods so I can showcase. Yes, we can run map mods with this. Uh, the only place where I think reduced charges will matter is specifically in content like Ubers where there's immunity phases and during that phase, it's long enough phase that you probably can run out of your flash charge. Stuff like that. That's when the flash charge generation mod I think will matter. In regular mapping scenarios, you're going to be sustaining your flash charges fine. It shouldn't be a problem just because killing monsters generates charges. Now, that all being said, plans for the future. You might be thinking... 36,000 ES, that's pretty high. You're probably maxed out. Well, no, we're not. I actually have plans that would take our ES quite a bit higher, and I intend to fulfill them. Whether or not I succeed is another question. Upgrade number one. A perfect tree on my Dunes Quebre. I hate chance orbs, but unfortunately for me, it is literally the only way I'm going to get the perfect tree on my Dune Quebre. And the perfect tree represents getting at least one passive back. I could get a keystone like Eternal Youth, or I could get a keystone like Blood Magic. I'm probably going to go for Eternal Youth because it means we can maybe path our tree differently and optimize it more, which would be big. Number two, it'll get us 4% attributes, which is very important for this build. Percent attributes is the best in slot stat and then instead of four percent four percent in in strength mod i can have six percent six percent so collectively i will net myself six percent strength six percent in six percent or four percent dex about i think 30 percent increased damage because the attribute mod comes with 30 percent damage and i will get a passive point which will give me six percent life now if you're watching the stream you would have noticed pretty much every time we get a we get a level we almost go up one kes every single time that's because six percent life at this point, at this stage of the character, represents around a 7 to 900 energy shield gain. And there's a lot of one passive lives we can still grab. And therefore, if we get a passive point, that is going to represent a lot of ES for us. Um, I wasted my Valorous Fire, but that's okay, because we have the Soul Ripper ready to go for when he spawns again. He spawns again, we prop Valorous Fire, and we can finish him off. Um, this is what it looks like doing a Guardian. It's not too big of a deal. Right now, our damage is actually starting to shape up pretty decently, but we still have so much more to climb, and I'm excited to do it. I have currently just level 2 on my Awakened Gems and stuff, and so we'll be leveling that up. I still have a level 20 Righteous Fire. I'm going to get a level 21, which means we can sacrifice or get more percent damage based on the amount we sacrifice. All that stuff's going to be nice upgrades for our character, and I'm working towards that. Um, but... Hopefully this gives you a good idea on the project I'm working on. I love it. This is a character that is specifically a passion project. This isn't a build I would recommend per se in terms of it's expensive. This is going to cost a lot to do, but if you want to take the time and take the grind, this character is very satisfying to upgrade because there's something special about seeing your, your energy shield pool or whatever go up by one passive point is the difference in right here we go from 800 to 460 so you can see one passive point 800 uh is that's a big change most times when you're leveling up a character you grab life and you get like 150 per flat life or 200 percent life or not 200 percent life 200 flat life or whatever and every single passive point is just this noticeably large number going up 1000 energy shield on every single gear upgrade and every single change we do is big and uh, the gear upgrades aren't going to stop at just the mace we're going to be able to go for an ivory tower eventually if i get 15 percent explicit defense that alone will be a 2k to 3k es upgrade if i craft a belt that should be a sizable es upgrade if i craft a better pair of boots that should be a sizable es upgrade if i if i go take the time to double corrupt shaper's touch i could double corrupt this and get six percent life on it and that would be a hp upgrade and there's a lot of things where i can push this higher and higher and higher and personally my goal or what i'm trying to get to 
I would like to pass my previous record of 50,000 ES. I got to 50,000 ES with a build that just simply wasn't a build. It was there only to stack ES, whereas this character is a build and I want it to be functional and I want it to be good. And it would be a great accomplishment to get there. I know it's going to take a lot of investment, but we're going to keep grinding it out. And I'm probably going to keep sending you guys some update videos on the character. Hopefully you guys enjoy the progress. As always, thanks for watching Exiles. Take care.